of April 2015. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call Maureen Pugh. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I stand uh, today in support of the Social Assistance Residenc Residency Qualification Legislation Bill in its second reading. And um, it's, a, a, it's a little bit of an anticlimax for me to stand and sp uh, speak, um, considering I've just followed the, the Deputy Leader's speech. It's a great pitch, Ron Mark. That's right. Um, and I, and uh, if we were scoring you, we would, you would be right up there. We know, we know he wants the job. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, we have had some very um, in enlightened and sometimes irrelevant contributions to this bill uh, during this uh, round of uh, the reading, the second reading, but I will um, do my best to maintain my focus. This is an omnibus bill, and my understanding that the use of omnibus means that it reflects some changes in more than one bill, which this one certainly does and it uh, makes changes to the uh, New Zealand superannuation and the veterans' pensions. And the purpose of the bill is to allow people from the Cook Islands, Nui and Tokelau to be able to be resident in New Zealand for a minimum of 10 years after the age of 20 and five years after the age of 50 to qualify for New Zealand super at the moment. The bill will in fact mean that that New Zealand residency uh, post 50, so the five years after 50, will actually apply in the Cook Islands, Nui or Tokelau. Um, one of the main reasons behind this change is that there was concern in those islands that the uh, depopulation of those islands to New Zealand in order to qualify for the New Zealand superannuation or veterans' pensions. And by having that five years after 50, um, at that age, probably well settled here in this country, uh, there was less motivation, perhaps, to go back to the islands for their retirement and instead preferring to stay in, in New Zealand where their families are. And a motivator for coming to New Zealand in the first place, as we heard uh, during the submission period, was to further education or to come here for work or to reconnect with family that were already resident here. So at the moment, um, now this bill is proposing that they can, provided they have spent 10 years here in New Zealand after the age of 20, that their return to the Cook Islands, Nui or Tokelau after the age of 50 for five years will mean that they will qualify for New Zealand's superannuation right. or veterans' pension. Um, Madam Speaker, uh, there were seven submissions made to the Select Committee, uh, two oral submissions, including a very impassioned one from the High Commissioner from Nui. Um, and his submission was suggesting that the, the um, 10 years after 20 and the five years after 50 would apply in any of the countries of the realm. Um, and although it was quite an ambitious request, uh, the committee and the advisers did suggest it was far outside of the scope of the intention of the bill. Um, there was, were concerns raised during the submission period um, that this bill was actually um, com not complying with the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act of 1990. Um, and, and one of the submissions um, had actually submitters had actually taken a case to the um, Human Rights Tribunal based on this. But the advice received was that uh, this did appear to be consistent uh, with the rights and freedoms as in the Bill of Rights Act. And so as a result, there were no changes um, suggested. Um, but um, Madam Speaker, um, my 
contribution to this debate is actually going to be about uh, the suggestion that one submitter had, which was that all of the Pacific Islands be included in this bill, um, which of course deemed it out of scope for contribution. But I thought it was an opportune time to pay tribute to the other Pacific Islands, because I know from the area that I am in, West Coast Tasman, uh, the Pacific Islands and the contribution they make to our REC schemes, and then further to the economic uh, prosperity of not only the areas that they come to work in here in New Zealand, but um, but their own country right. when uh, their funds are able to go back. Um, I uh, absolutely makes a difference uh, to us all, and I think that partnership is invaluable to uh, all of those islands. Um, there are 11,100 places available, as at the end of last year, for REC workers. And, uh, and I think uh, it's a fine opportunity to pay tribute to them. And I'm sure the orchardists and vineyards around New Zealand would also um, accept that. Uh, but in um, coming to a close, Madam Speaker, I'm actually going to suggest that we, we shelve this bill. And the reason for that is because last week, uh, Mark Patterson from New Zealand First was fortunate to have his private member's bill drawn from the ballot. The New Zealand Superannuation and Retirement Income Fair Residency Amendment Bill. Now, I congratulate Mark Patterson. He's been quite lucky in having that one drawn. I think he's had two drawn in the short oh, time he's been here. What are the odds of that? And he stated very confidently that he believes he's going to get support across the House for his private member's bill, but what that will do <laughs> is actually make it make the residency um, requirement 20 years here in New Zealand. So it looks like we're going to be debating two separate bills that are conflicting in terms of uh, the outcome that is required. Um, um, and you know, I have, we have not had that discussion as a caucus, but that proposal was actually put forward, um, as Honourable Ron Mark has already mentioned today, by National, by Sir Bill English last year, in June, I believe it was. So um, it is a concept that, um, that National has supported in the past, but with two bills now, with two different time frames attached to them, it seems only logical that we should put this bill and this debate on hold while we see the outcome of this new bill that has been introduced into the House. So, um, M Madam Speaker, uh, thank you. Um, I will uh, wind up my contribution um, by just talking to uh, some of the other submissions that were heard by the Select Committee. And um, one of those was about the objectives around the constitutional arrangements that we have with uh, Cook Islands, Nui and Tokelau, and um, the colourful contribution um, in the House today. Um, so, the, so one of the submitters, um, as we talked about, I talked about before, said that this could apply to the other 22 countries in the Pacific. Um, and th our contribution back was that the, um, that the provisions that are already in, in a, our arrangements around the, f the 10 years uh, after 20, the five years after 50, was applicable to um, all of those other islands and that we would not be taking any further uh, changes to the bill. The bill, as it's been presented to the House, um, is unchanged from the original, and uh, even though we did have some um, very good contributions from our submitters, um, I think that it's, uh, we've found a good place. I think also that um, if the House is of the opinion that we should delay having any further debate on this bill while we see what the alternative bill of Mark Patterson's uh, comes to, then I think that would be a, a very appropriate outcome. And with that, Madam Speaker, I commend this bill to the well House. Done. Well done. Well done.
Okay, so <laughs> I call Jen Logie. Thank you. Kia ora, Fakalupa.